Hey everyone, welcome to my Doom Eternal review for the Nightmare Mode. Um, this is going to be a discussion and spoiler alert for the game ahead. Uh, the gameplay that you're going to see in the background is going to be all Nightmare. None of it is going to be below. Um, just to start things off, hit that like button and subscribe. And let's take a look at these graphics and see how amazing and detailed they look. Now, I didn't know if anybody else did, but I got some Mortal Kombat vibes when I saw this. And I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Um, as you can see in the next, fo next photo, that you're going to see that I completed the game in the Nightmare Mode. Which was extremely, extremely difficult. You know, there was a lot of rage-inducing moments and a lot, a lot of deaths. Especially the Marauders, which we'll get to later on in the, um, in the video. Okay, so for starters, you're going to die a lot in this game mode. In this instance, your screen is going to be flashing red constantly. There's going to be a sense of dread as soon as you play this mode. Um, my advice is to keep moving around as I tried to do in this. This was early, uh, early on in the game that um, you know you have less abilities, less, less guns, and less movement available, and uh, health isn't really an issue because you're going to be dying a lot. But, in that instance, um, probably the best advice I can give you is to never stop moving. If you stop moving, you are dead. Um, basically, the enemies will corner you in some type of way, shape, or form, and you will die immensely a lot in this mode. Now, this was probably the best, almost like my favorite part in the entire game, is when you get to play as the Revenant. Um, I really enjoyed this section of the game, basically because you got to play as a demon, and basically you were returning the Slayer's shotgun right here. Um, I kind of laughed my ass off as soon as I saw this because of how scared he looks, but at the same time, this was a great addition to the game. It mixed it up a lot, and basically gave us a new feature that we never played before. Now, the game is going to throw encounters at you at each certain point of the level, which is basically an area where you had to clear out before you can actually proceed into the main storyline. Now, the game also gives you these uh, areas that are called Slayer Gates, which are basically areas that you, as the player, can go to and get these Imperial Keys to unlock the secret weapon in the Doom Slayer base. But, as the only way you can get it is it by completing these Slayer Gates. Now these Slayer Gates require keys that you find in the level which can uh, determine whether or not you can finish them or you basically die and have to restart the Slayer Gate all around. Now these Slayer Gates usually typically throw a bunch of demons at you, sometimes demons that you haven't even faced yet to mix up the challenge. So if you die a lot and you fail a lot, you know, maybe it's best that you go back and try those again now that you are more OP than ever. Um, basically, the other thing is the demon spawns in these counters can also range from heavies to non-heavies. Heavies being like the Spider Mastermind, the... Um, uh, I can't think of another... Maybe like the Barons of Hell sometimes spawn in as well. Um, these are demons that entice the challenge and give you an opportunity to try and test your hones against these skills. Skill-based demons, I mean. Uh, pretty much, these encounters can also introduce demons that you haven't met before, which I'll get into later on in the video. Uh, basically, it's going to throw a lot of mixture. Sometimes they'll throw two of the same de heavy demons. Sometimes they'll just throw a bunch of gargoyles, which are pretty easy and maintained, and so along with the imps and the soldiers, which are basically uh, weapon pones that you can you know, get ammo from and pretty much you know, get ammo, armor, uh, anything to keep you going in the fight. Now, some of these encounters are easy, and some of them are difficult and take multiple, multiple tries. Uh, there's a lot of trial and errors with these encounters as well. Means that finding that perfect path and getting knowing where these enemies are and how to defeat the area that you are in. Um, like I said, it's easy, sometimes it's hard, and there's a lot of trial and error done with these areas, means that you need to find a route that suits you best 
into the gameplay mechanics of, hey, here's an encounter, figure it out for yourself, versus uh, the original Duke game where you had this open space and you were able to move around freely. This is kind of more arena-ish, if you think about it. Um, pretty much by that, I mean that um, there's, a, there's a learning curve into figuring this stuff out. And being like, okay, you know, what if I try it this way, you know, okay, I died a lot in this area, you know, maybe I'll try this area. Uh, The game is very good at mixing it up with these encounters, and the better you figure them out, the easier it will be. Now let's talk about boss fight frustrations that I've had in this mode. Uh, It's probably much easier in the lower modes. Uh, Basically, to be honest, I actually thought about doing this game on Ultra Violence the first time I played but then I was like, nah, you know, maybe I'll do, I'll, I'll just stick with Nightmare since the last Doom game I played, um, Doom 2016 that is, um, I finished the game on Ultra Violence and then I played on Nightmare just to give myself a challenge. Uh, this time I just went straight into Nightmare mode, <laughs> which, you know, some people, you know, they'll just start with Ultra Violence or the lower modes and be like, oh yeah, yeah the, the game wasn't even that hard. Uh, uh, yeah, Nightmare is pretty, pretty fucking hard. Um... Boss fight encounters, uh, frustrations that I had were, uh, this was basically like these bosses that would just come in, you know, um, they would just rip your asshole up immensely. Um, especially this asshole right here being that the, uh, the doom hunter, you know, he was pretty introduced well, I thought of, but you know, like I said, uh, this guy's a dick. Uh, he basically runs around in these rovers, and he will pretty much uh, spawn enemies. Uh, there's been times where I've died, and different enemies have spawned versus the ones that you're seeing in the video right here. So there's different varieties of how enemies spawn, you know, being that sometimes the prowlers will spawn, uh, sometimes the catacomb demons will spawn, and then other times it will just be just whatever the game decides to throw at you. Uh, pretty much this guy has two phases in his thing. So after you get him off his little rover things that he's moving around on, and get his shield down using the... um, I forgot what weapon it is, but it's the one that you're going to see me shoot immensely. I think it was the plasma rifle. Um, You're going to see me shoot at him and bring his shield down. Now once you do this, you're able to bring his health down a little bit more. And pretty much by the end of that, you're going to, he's going to go into a second phase. Now his second phase is a little bit uh, easier than the first phase. First phase is hard as fuck. Uh, You're going to spend a lot of time gathering, you're going to spend more time gathering resources than you are facing him head on. Now, head on, I mean, don't mean go fucking Rambo on him and just start going up against him. He will annually like fuck your shit up quick. Um, he basically, once you get him down in the second phase, then he'll just focus more on melee and trying to chase you down and get you into those areas where, you know, you're going to get cornered. Uh, he's less more, he's more mobile now than he was, uh, before you bring, before you get him down to his first phase, uh, or after the first phase, he will, uh, spend more time chasing you and moving around a lot more versus, him in the second phase where he actually does pursue you in some points but he'll keep his distance as well um basically also the other thing that kind of this game lacked of is demon intros they're just gonna throw like like the hell knight in 2016 was a good addition um to demon intro basically this guy was terrifying but in this game i feel like he's more dubbed down than usual um he doesn't seem like much of a threat in this game particularly in my opinion um i just kind of saw him as like oh look a hell knight you know he's not that enticing or you know he's not that difficult to kill now versus 2016 he was you know that guy came at you at full speed this game he just kind of jumps around at you doesn't chase you very often well he does chase you but it's not like a terrifying encounter like oh my god now like i said earlier this game does throw some dark soul elements at you which is like like i said before figuring out that learning curve of the game figuring out these boss bosses how to get them down to lower health how to beat them you know um just trying to 
basically figure out like the best way to beat this boss. Now, this like Doom Hunter, for example, I spent a lot of time dying on this boss. A lot. Not as much as the Marauder, which we'll get into later. You know, that guy's a dick also. Um, but basically, uh, he killed me a lot, and most of them were like bullshit instances where I would basically be backing up, and all of a sudden, a soldier will... Or like that, how that just happened. Uh, they'll spawn in behind you, and then they just hit you immensely, and then you'll just die. Now you can see right here that I was actually able to beat him, thank God. But um, one of the things is that you have to keep moving in this mode. Now speaking of moving, I was actually uh, able to get this guy right here stuck behind this wire. Um, that was a bug. Uh, initially, he actually, if you keep watching this gameplay, he never moves from that wire at all. He's just kind of stuck there, which I felt was like, it wasn't really much of a challenge after that happened. So I was like, oh, you know, I can just farm for a little bit, get some health, get some ammo, and then go back to him and shoot at him immensely. Getting his shield down like you see right here. Um, but he does take some damage on me, you know. I don't move around that often. Uh, this guy just kind of jumps away from me. So I'm just like, yeah, whatever. And uh, he basically, you know, just just stayed there the entire time. And I was actually able to kill him. Uh, but his buddy was still lingering around. So I had to deal with him. But he was kind of far away. Um, but yeah, that was my uh, initial bug. You know, it wasn't the first one. But other than that, yeah. Now, there are some boss fight dick moves in this game, being that sometimes you'll fight up against a boss, and all of a sudden, like, the Barons of Hell or the Mastermind spiders will come out of nowhere and just, like, fuck your shit up immensely, and at points, it does get frustrating, but it's also, you know, again, it's gonna give you that sense of challenge. Now, I'm pretty sure it's different in Nightmare Mode versus the other modes, where it's like, oh, you know, there's more of them, and there's more that you have to deal with, but I thought that that was pretty frustrating, but also a decent challenge as well. I also thought that this was kind of funny also watching these two, two like, battle it out and then, like, the Mancubus just being, like, the referee and, like, also getting hit as well, but I thought it was funny. Now, let's talk about platforming. As you can see, I hit the wrong button here and died, but, you know, platforming, I didn't really mind much in this game. Uh, I thought it was a little bit of a break from the chaos of going on around you, especially in Nightmare Mode. Um, it was a neat addition, but it's not something that I would want to look forward to in future Doom titles or any other game that it decides to put out. Um, but as you can see here, you know, the plane's moving as I'm moving around, which I thought was a neat addition. But other than that, I didn't really mind the platforming as much. Let's talk about these dick holes right here. These guys are a bitch to kill. They slither around. They try to, you know... They're very hard to hit, but it can also be really easy to hit, especially if you have the rocket launcher mod where it locks on. But these guys whip the holy shit out of you if you are close to them, and they will literally kill you instantly. Um, you know, other than that, anything is going to kill you instantly in nightmare mode. But, uh, yeah, these dickheads also right here, you know, like to pop up shields and, you know, block your shots, block you from getting anywhere. They're a pain in the ass as well, and I appreciate it if those guys would just die immensely as, you know, uh, as anybody else. But, yeah, as you can see there, that guy just kind of just slithers around, and he's just like, oh, yeah, whatever. But, on the other note, is that he's actually kind of helpful, as sometimes he'll spawn that shield and then block whatever is coming at you, which is pretty nice as well. Now, in some encounters, you will also find yourself like, oh yeah, I'm going to be a badass, you know, whatever. But then, like, you'll come into encounters like this, where you'll merely just get, you lose all your armor and health, as you can see right there. I had a decent amount, and you will literally just get your ass kicked if you think about going into these areas. Thinking that you're like, oh yeah, I'm really, really OP, you know, whatever. But uh, you also, you're going to get your ass kicked. Especially, you know, I was actually lucky enough and fortunate enough to go through here easily. But, you know, at the same time, it wasn't easy. You know, you're just, you're going to get your ass kicked immensely. And you're probably going to die if you go in like that. Now, let's talk about the, this asshole. And by asshole, I don't mean this asshole. I'm talking about... This asshole that's coming in right now. This guy is a dick. He will literally spawn a dog on you. Not only do you have to deal with a dog, but you're also going to have to deal with his shield ass and him blocking shots. 
basically, if you are far away from him, you will basically get his axe thrown at you. But if you are close to him, he's going to shoot you with a shotgun, which I thought that was kind of funny right there where he just threw Samuel through the portal. But he's going to shoot you with his shotgun straight up. And so you're going to have to, like, close this gap of basically, you know, this little gap where it's between you and him, and he basically, when his eyes turn green, you're going to shoot at him. Now, I found it easy to just run around in circles around him and basically uh, double barrel him since that seems to be the easiest weapon to use on him. Uh, basically, you can do do four shots on him and then back away and then do it all over again, kind of rinse and repeat. But he moves around a lot, and he will basically just fuck your shit up, as you saw right there, and his dog will also. Now, did I also mention that this game's graphics are freaking beautiful, especially in this level right here, where you're now seeing bits and pieces fly apart from Mars, and, you know, you're just kind of in space, you know, just kind of wandering around. You know, sometimes you gotta soak in that atmosphere. Uh, basically, um... You know, I didn't really mind looking at stuff like this, but I thought this part of the game was kind of cool, especially when you override this machine fire and it spits out this, like, and you're like, eh, nope, never mind. You know, I just kind of got some Halo vibes from this right here. You know, that was kind of funny that he just kicked that and then hops in and then just gets shot up. You know, I thought that that part was pretty badass as well. Um, you know, probably, like, one of the coolest parts in the game is sometimes these cutscenes. But also, there could be times where the coolest parts in the game is when you're just ripping and tearing through every single possible demon. And it's make, it makes you look like a badass. Like, they did a really good job on that. So, this game is also going to test you in ways of making you think either you did the right choice or you did the wrong choice. The wrong choice being that, you know, you fired your BFG at an enemy that you got sick and tired of killing you because you're pissed off. But... Then again, the next encounter is four of these assholes, and then guess what? You lost, you used your only BFG ammo, and you basically effed up from there. And he basically killed you and caused you to fail. As you can see right here, you know, I got sick and tired of him killing me, and I swapped to the BFG and then tried to kill him with it. And yeah, that was the end of that. And I was like, oh yeah, and then the next encounter was like, Three more of those and a couple of spider mass mines of Mancubus and was like, oh my god, come on now, give me a break. So yeah, don't make that mistake that I did and try to be a badass when really it doesn't help at all. So this part also right here kind of, um, you know, kind of scared the shit out of me because I wasn't expecting it. You know, I don't know if you could tell if I got scared or not, but I was like, oh yeah, you know. Oh, uh, shoot that. And then I was just drop in real quick. And then I saw him. I was like, oh, shit. And the entire time I saw this, I was thinking to myself, like, please, for the love of God, do not come to life and kill me. You know, that would be great. You know, I actually had to swim across with my eyes closed because I was afraid. <laughs> so this is another bug that I ran into. You know, again, the bugs are not, like, very a big deal in this game. You know, they're actually really, really minimal, which I'm proud of. But I was just running around grabbing armor and trying to find health. And all of a sudden this guy disappeared. And I was like, um, you know, I was going to come back and kill him. But, you know, I guess he just went away. Beat the game on nightmare mode, I think. But correct me if I'm wrong if it's any mode. But you'll get this funny cutscene, which I thought was hilarious. Take a look. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? <laughs> I kind of laughed a little bit as soon as the gun kind of clicked in his face. But as soon as also you beat the game, you're going to get this broadcast as well. In what will hopefully be our final broadcast, to all the people of Earth, to anyone listening, the demonic horde has been defeated. The beast, identified by ARC scientists as the icon of sin, was destroyed earlier today by the Slayer himself. And with it, the majority of the demonic force has dispersed. With the threat decreased, it is important now more than ever that we come together. There is hope. The human race will persevere. Many of the survivors believe the Slayer to be a godlike figure in what was a battle between good and evil of biblical proportions. 
As humanity struggles to understand what happened to them and why, many look to the Slayer now for answers, but his whereabouts remain unknown. Now, like I said, I didn't really run into that many bugs in this game, but when I did, it was something along this right here, which, you know, I was kind of like, oh, you know, that's kind of this point that he's just kind of stuck there, but, you know, uh, he was kind of easy to kill. He didn't even shoot at me, which was the weird thing about it. But, again, you know, it was one of those things where it's like I didn't really mind it that often. But it was, again, you know, it was a little bit disappointing, but I didn't mind it. But, you know, so, yeah, uh, that's another thing. Um, another one is, like I said earlier when I was facing off him, is when his buddy and pal got kind of stuck. You know, he was just kind of stuck there still, as you could tell. And I was actually able to get his shield off. And actually able to kill him, which I kind of made this mistake right here because I was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to jump up there because then that asshole is going to shoot me. So I'm just shooting with rockets, but uh, no, he just kind of responded. And I just got kind of mad and just kind of beat the shit out of this guy for some reason, which I don't know why, but I was just like, yeah, whatever. Shot him with a rocket. Um, but yeah, you know, frame rates. Um, I basically uh, had stutters here and there. And, you know, I'm not playing on PC or anything, I'm playing on like Xbox One. So, you know, get you know, PC's probably gonna has le less frame issues like besides this. But I didn't really come across them as often, but when I did it was like when an enemy spawned in and the frame rate just stopped. But other than that, you know I maybe in the entire game I ran into that issue twice. And mind you, like it took me six days to beat this fucking game on nightmare mode so you can tell like where you know i spent 13 hours a day on the same dude or the same area and being that i was only able to get past two of them you know kind of like it was like i got through this encounter which took forever like i went through this one encounter and then a boss fight and then another encounter all throughout the 13 days now you're gonna say oh yeah you suck you know get good why don't you but at the same time it's like uh, this is nightmare mode. It's not easy, you know. You gotta figure out stuff, and like I said, only ran into these frame rate issues maybe two or three times. Uh, enemies that issues that I ran into also, you know, two or three times. You know, it wasn't like, oh my god, this is game breaking. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, um, that happened. All right, moving on. You know, as I cut that head off. And, you know, that was the other cool thing, it was, like, these cutscenes also, you know, I wish kind of knew more about the story, you know, why the Slayer was entombed and all that other fun stuff. Uh, just basically, just kind of, like, you know, it was more of, like, shooting this, shooting that, and then I wish they kind of did more of the story as well. Now, speaking of the story, the story is phenomenal. Like, it's amazing, you know, 10 out of 10 rating. For me especially, you know, the Doom 2016 was very well also. But I feel like, you know, there was some stuff that they didn't touch on, like how the Tomb Slayer got out of the predicament that he was at the cliffhanger of Doom 2016. Um, as well as, you know, how Samuel Hayden, like we only saw that he had fallen, but we didn't see what happened. You know, that was the other thing uh, that I kind of wish they showed. You know, that way we can see, like, how his predicament, you know, came to be where he was at in the game. Also, you know, he was the main villain uh, after Olivia Pierce had, pa had after you killed her, um, with her being the Spire Mastermind and all that, and Hell lying to her, and basically turning into her a demon, which was actually very easy to kill on Nightmare, surprisingly. Um, you know, you didn't really face off against Samuel, you know, he was just kind of there, like, helping you. Now, speaking of final boss encounters, was the con maker, you know, I was stuck on her for a good day and a half until I finally figured out what I needed to do. And it, she was a pain in the ass also because she would spawn these, uh, these enemies called maker drones, and they would literally just shoot the holy fucking shit out of you. The entire time that you're playing and fighting her. Now, for example, like, you know, you would just kind of face her and then all of a sudden you would kill the drone makers and then, you know, deal with her and then drone makers would come back again. It's like, oh, fuck. And then her shield regenerates and, you know, you got to deal with that again. And it's like, 
Oh, it was so frustrating. I'm not going to lie. I was getting kind of pissed. You know, I squeezed my controller a couple times, almost threw it. You know, getting mad. But other than that, the other thing that I wish that they touched on was the whole station turning red after, you know, the demons invaded and all that, which you'll see here in a little bit. Uh, basically, you know, I didn't really mind that as well as that happening, but also I kind of wish we know about what happened to Vega, you know, all this, there's so many questions that I have, but I'm sure they'll either introduce it in DLC or in the next game, you know, we didn't really touch bases with the UAC, but, you know, judging by, like, this picture right here, you know, uh, we don't really see exactly what happens with him or the UAC. So maybe in the next game, instead of dealing with the demons, we'll be dealing with the UAC. But maybe we'll also be dealing with the UAC and the demons as well. So they're kind of out of the picture as well. But also, you know, there's things that you know I have questions about and I want answers. <laughs> so I can give props to the game doing very well with the progression upgrading system. You know, you don't have to buy anything through microtransactions. Everything is in-game only. You know, you work hard to get it. You know, there's certain abilities that you can grab. As you can see, I, can, I use these three right here. Now, going through, you know, you're going to find a lot of stuff in the game. You know, stuff that's like lore. But basically, you know, I, I, as much as like I was reading the lore, I was also daydreaming also about like the, like certain aspects of like the game and like, how gorgeous it is, and I just kind of was like going back and reading it, and then playing the game, going back and reading it, playing the game. Now, there's also a lot of different enemy types as well, you know, judging by like whether they're small, heavy, super heavy. Uh, basically, you know, you got these guys, which is kind of walk around aimlessly, those throw fireballs, fireballs, he throws fireballs. Uh, I don't really see much of those guys. That guy's a dick. You know, he just kind of shoots the holy shit at you. But the Lost Souls were kind of meh. Spider Masterminds, you know, Catacombs, this guy, he's a dick. Uh, basically, all of the enemies in this game are ticks to you. Especially, you know, the Marauder. Or the Armored Cat... Or not Cat Demon. Uh, the Armored Mancubus, you know, he's a dick. Pinkies weren't that very hard to deal with, you know, jump over them. That guy was a dick, he spawned in front of you or behind you. He was easy, wasn't really much of a threat. Uh, didn't really see him very often. Uh, he just kind of was in the game twice. That guy's a dick, you know. Like I said, they're all dicks, but, you know, just reiterating that most of them are, like, super, super dickish. Um, yeah, this guy likes to slither around. Uh, that guy is, you know easy to kill with one shot bfg but he spawns demons and yeah uh this guy not very difficult you know he was difficult this guy's a dick because he has a shield uh super dick because he's an asshole <laughs> and he was pretty easy you know shoot him until he dies you know he also like shot rockets at you but they were easy to evade um so yeah uh most of these enemies have different critiques i guess you'd say you know for example buff totem gave them abilities to move faster and be more deadlier um but most of them you know took certain weapons to kill so you would actually you know go through the weapons and like try to see which one was best take his health down which one was easy you know we all know the bfg was like the one shot you know glory kill and basically killed every single one of them but, you know, also there's challenges in the game that, you know, if you want to really test out your skills, there's mission challenges, you know, you can, you know, test and see, like, if you can get these challenges done, whether you're not getting them done. There's also really challenges to get XP and get in-game items, you know, that are awarded to you, like skins. Uh, none of it breaks gameplay. It's all cosmetic, which I kind of like. But, so, yeah, those are my initial thoughts on Doom Eternal. The game is really well made, hardly any bugs, you know, basically um, anything, the game is phenomenal. You know, I didn't have any issues uh, besides, you know, dying a lot in Nightmare Mode. But here's a little nice Easter egg for you. If you guys go down into your Doom headquarters, there's actually a YouTuber who, you know, had an Easter egg for him, which was kind of nice of the id Software team to do that. But if you ever watch Markiplier, he pointed out also that this book right here, How to Come a Mustache, was a tribute to Markiplier's father. 
who passed away. So if you guys can do me a favor, also go watch his videos. His YouTube videos are very inspirational and funny. You know, I kind of laugh a lot. But, you know, every time you see that book, you know, give it give it a tribute. You know, pay your respects to, you know, a f the father of a son who, like, you know, is, like, one of the greatest all-time YouTubers ever. So, yeah, you know, go watch his videos. You know, just, you know, pay your dues, pay your respects towards him, you know. Uh, that's pretty much all I can say about that. And also, um, you know, if you really enjoyed this video, guys, you know, give it a like, subscribe. And this is my Doom Eternal review and discussion. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as well as I did making it. You know, I had a lot of fun uh, playing this game as mad as it made me. Uh, due to the fact that I was playing on Nightmare Mode. But also, after you beat the game, as you saw there, you know, Earth is clear of the demonic invasion, but everything is still red, which means that Samuel Hayden has control over the facility. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya! Oh yeah, I forgot. Did I mention how awesome the fucking music is in this game? Like, take a listen before you go.